the earth just ke- over millions and millions of years and thousands of years that humans have been around does. the earth just keeps getting whacked the evidence is so <laughs> overwhelming in that in, in say going back to the younger driest period of time there's evidence when you say get whacked more than 30 percent of all landmass at that time was charred burned it, they, they claim that it's more fires than existed in the time of the dinosaurs now i don't know if that, that's an article i read on science alert i don't know if they can truly prove that but if nothing else 30 percent of all landmass existing today was burned and scorched to death at that period of time mm-hmm. that like helps people to wrap their heads around like this the world was on fire yeah, yeah that's that's the younger driest mat they yeah it's it's they they estimate as part of the the burning and because there was floods and fire and this correlates to a lot of origin myths from cultures all around the world but yeah 10 percent of the biomass i think the nine to ten percent of the which is an inconceivable number of that's how much of the world was was burnt, and that's now embedded 10% in this black mass. Ten percent of the biomass. Yeah, it's so crazy that there's a, a like literally a dark line. Yeah, in the ground. In the ground <laughs> that shows where everything was on fire for a long, long fucking time. time. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's crazy. We, we we barely survived it. There's actually we now have a correlation of not only population reduction but a a, a significant um, drop in like genetic diversity as a result, like it's tied to the younger dryas. There's been a, a few good studies recently done at that. So we were one of the megafauna that the 50% of megafauna at the time that actually survived and, and got through that event. How do they think people survived? Is there any speculation? It, it, and where did we survive? Like where was the good spot? I think caves. I, I think a lot of it would have been underground. And I think that's, you might actually, they may have even known. Like I think there's, some evidence to suggest that some of these, like Darren Kuyu in, Tur- in, uh, in Turkey, the, in the Cappadocia region, region, could host tens of thousands of people. There's massive labyrinths all over Egypt at beneath Saqqara. There's miles and miles of tunnels and catacombs. I've been an- down into a bunch of them. I, and, and even when you look at sites like Gobekli Tepe, there's been some in- interpretations of the artwork on that site that seems to indicate a cosmic calendar. Like they're almost marking that date. We know that the ancients were watching the sky. Like they were concerned about it. And comet mythology is a fantastic topic for Randall. I talked with him about this quite a bit. The comet, it wasn't seen as a pretty thing in the sky. Like it was the, the harbinger of doom. Like comets and we, uh, all those types of things were just seen as really bad things that they were preparing for. But I, I think we survived partly because of diversity and being spread out all around the world. There were parts of the world that weren't as badly touched, like Australia, for example, that whole continent wasn't as badly affected as, say, the Northern Hemisphere was from the Younger Dryas, mm. uh, but also caves, 100% caves and, and sheltered caves, uh, those big cities that, that they could take tens of thousands of people underground. Mm. Yeah. Something wild that it's popped back up in my head, speaking of flooding and this 11,000-year time frame, going back to the Brishot structure, there's a study that I came across that ties into the video that we were just mentioning, that off the west coast of Sahara, Africa, right in front of the Rishot structure, there is an underwater seafloor slide dated at approximately 11,000 years ago, and keyword approximately, that the very symbol is in there. So they're not entirely sure of the date, but in that time frame. And this sediment looks like in in the shape that it was blasted from a a flood of water coming out of the Sahara, just based on the nature of the shape of it, that's more than 200 miles wide and maybe 130, 140, 150 miles from north to south. And it's layered sentiment that is 2,000 meters, excuse me, more than a mile deep, and it's layered, this Mm. right here. So one, it's corresponding evidence that a uh, massive force of water may have blown out of the Sahara. And the one reason why this is so significant is besides the fact that it indicates a possible flood of 11,000 years ago, but if there was any remnants of Atlantis, if there was, if the Rishot structure was the location, this is where you would want to go look, looking. I mean, it's again, mm. layered sentiment, more sediment, sediment excuse me, yeah. thank you, yeah, sentiment, uh, <laughs> uh, more than a mile deep. Wow. Yeah. That's what, just to put this into perspective from going from east to west, based on this 200 mile, the the widest point of the Florida Peninsula is 150 miles. Like this is more than 50 miles wider than the entire state of Florida panhandle. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's the same distance from New York City to um, uh, where did I have that in uh, D.C. Excuse me. Yeah. Mm. Um, so like this is literally evidence of a catastrophic flood. That's more than just a seafloor slide. Something bulldozed. That's- and, and when you look at these yeah. fluvial erosions, to anyone that's looking at this right now, signature uh, traits of catastrophic water erosion. And it looks exactly like they teach in school when it comes to water striations, whether it's from glaciers or from water. These are signature traits of water. This is not wind. Yeah. And the fact that all these areas of white blemishes, say in the wrist shot, 
are confirmed salt. There's numerous studies. I mean, for example, there is a treatise uh, from 1851 from England and Mauritania that lists a few things. It talks about, one, that abundance of gold. It lists that, but well, actually, let me back up. Salt, they used to export gold out of Mauritania to Europe, and that's one of the locations. And uh, also, gold, it said that prior to the land or the gold rush of North America back in the 1800s, Europe got most of their gold supply from Mauritania as well. Wow. Which is an interesting point because if that was a site of Atlantis, which was said to be so rich in gold, what an interesting mm-hmm. similarity. Go back to that image again, please, Jamie. If you, the, what's really fascinating, too, is the, the description of Atlantis of having that opening to the south. And then you see this clear pathway to the south. To the south. Yep. Everything lines up. The shape of Atlantis like the the concentric circles the amount of them earth to water the way it, the the representation of it as described right. the mountains to the north like everything lines up and not only that all that salt is all if people play around with this on Google Earth you can check the elevation by using your mouse all the areas with all the most significant m- amounts of salt happen to be at the lowest elevations which i think is corresponding evidence that seawater had settled and later evaporated there and as you see here, you can see mm. it, it rips through the entire Sahara. And if you, if you look at their study that's showing the Trans-Saharan Seaway of 56 to 66 million years ago, it shows that the water blasted to the south, but it does not show it going west over the Rishat. So I feel like there was some other event, something separate that happened. And I mean, yeah, these photos are spectacular. The photos are spectacular, but could you zoom out again, please, Jamie? The thing that's crazy is how clearly it looks like water came over that and washed back. Oh, look, look at the left side of that image. It looks so clearly like massive amounts of water came over there and then pulled back. Like, look at the way it's eroded. 